The blowing of the shofar reminds me of the battle cry. And I love to read the stories in the Bible. I grew up on stories of heroes like Joshua and David and um, Gideon, the big G, the little G. What a blessing. Wow. And I was just thinking about the years that we have been marching in the streets and taking this fight to the front lines where a lot of people won't go. I got an email from somewhere that has a picture of this house with your truck. <laughs> and that... That's as far as I'll go with that one. Yeah, his truck has the flag, half of the United States and half of Israel, for those who don't know. So somebody <laughs> took it upon themselves to see that, send a picture to me. Aren't you afraid? No. No. My God what are we afraid of? That's right, amen. <laughs> Be strong. And courageous. Amen. Hasak Amats. Hasak Amats. <clears throat> we are living in some peculiar days. We are. We are. I thought back oh, those days when we were marching in the streets of Temecula because we had 15, 1600 pro Palestinian marchers. Mm -hmm. And there was a little group yeah. of um, Jewish people with the Israeli flag right there on the corner of Winchester. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe it was Inez. And I jumped out of the car and immediately went and took the other side of that flag. And when you have all of these haters of Israel and death to Israel yeah. in Temecula. Yeah. This was 2008 when I first started to uh, go to your Bible studies. <clears throat> and um, I miss those days. Yeah. I miss marching in the streets yeah. of Los Angeles with my wife Frances wrapped around in the American flag, mm -hmm. <laughs> and Rochelle and I, Israeli flag. Israeli flag. We're radical. <laughs> Still are. <laughs> We'd get back to the church, and people would ask, Have you lost your mind? Christians are not supposed to be marching in the streets. Really? Well, they marched around Jericho. So. <laughs> well, the thing is, but that was... They marched around Jericho, but that wasn't the Christian church. Nope. Today's church wants to be politically correct. Today's pastors don't want to stir up the waters. They don't want to lose their congregations. So they have to be pacifist. Mm -hmm. Well, those pastors won't be marching with pro-Israel, mm -hmm. anti, no, they won't take a side. I read about that church in the book of Revelation. It's called the Church of Laodicea. Mm -hmm. It's amazing that there's two churches side by side. There's one that is the faithful remnant, Amen. the church that we read about in the book of Revelation, which is Philadelphia. And that church, well, they do stand with Israel. And they stand against everything that opposes Israel and the Jewish people. I know that. I read the Bible. And then there's that church that doesn't want to 
stir up controversy. So there's two kinds of followers of Yeshua. The radical ones, I believe those are the messianic <laughs> congregations. They're radical because they really believe that God has a future that he's ordained for Israel and the Jewish people. The messianic believers still believe <laughs> that the God of Israel will rise in these latter days. And it's not going to be politically correct for the messianic preachers who lead these messianic congregations. Yeah, they're going to be thrust outside. Why? Because, well, the doors of the churches will close to those radical messianic believers. We know that. We anticipate that. Here we are in 24, and it's a lot of years ago. Remember, Rochelle, when we'd be on the streets of L.A.? And it was a long time ago when we're marching in the streets of Temecula. San Bernardino. Woo! But San Bernardino, do we remember December 2nd, 2015? Right after our stand with the land in, in, in Highland, there were threats yeah. of an uprising, right? And it fell on deaf ears, and nobody wanted to believe that it could ever happen here in San Bernardino. But it did. And do you know that there was one messianic believer standing with Israel Amen. who was assassinated at work yeah. by a co-worker who was pro-Palestinian. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I remember many people asking, well, are you still going to stand with Israel, the Jewish people, or... Yeah, absolutely. All the more. Yeah. Because you see, when you believe in the God of Israel, and you have faith that God, the God of the Old Testament, is still the same God of the New Testament, yeah. and that the two New Testament did not replace Israel's Old Testament, but there is one testament that I want to testify to you today. <coughs> God is the God of Israel. And Israel is the Israel of God. And I am very interested to see how all of this political landscape is going to pan out. Because we are living in troublesome times. And our mission is to prepare the saints for war. Amen. Not to be pacifists. No. Not to be protesting Israel. And it's just war against an enemy that wants to destroy it. I listened to the United Nations address by Israel's ambassador. Oh, yeah. Woo, did I just yeah. praise God that we have heroes like that today who can stand up against the political <laughs> giants of this world. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't it be great if we had more Christian pastors who can speak like that without fear that they're going to lose their market share yeah. in Christendom? Yeah, it is very sad. So here we are. So yeah, if you want to come and take pictures of, <laughs> of our gathering place, and aren't you afraid? No, we're not afraid. Be not afraid. Amen. Joshua 1, 9. Right? What does it say? Have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Wherever you go. So he's with us in San Bernardino. He was with us when we stood there raising the, the Israeli flag at the Arch of Titus in Rome with a lot of military around and everybody watching. It says, who are these two crazy pro-Zionists? What are they doing? Hurry up, Rochelle. Let's take this picture and let's get out of here because we got to go. But that's the kind of people we are. Amen. We're not afraid. No. And we're not ashamed. And we're not here to tell you that we're a church that wants to be politically correct. We are not Laodicea. 
and we are not replacement theologists. Those doctrines of demons are going to be uprooted in these latter days, and the truth is going to be exposed that they do not stand with the Israel of God because they are not of God. So I wonder who they represent. So, that having been said, let's get excited about what's possible when you have faith in the God of Israel. Hebrews chapter 11 is where I want to read, and I don't have glasses to do all that. Uh, you want a magnifier? A magnifier would be good. Oh, absolutely, that would, that would work. And I'm going to silence my phone because the rabbi has a habit of calling me right in the middle of service. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 11, and we will begin with verse 1. And we are going to read through this chapter because this is the Hall of Fame of those men and women of God who were <laughs> citizens of the Israel of God, who worshipped and served the God of Israel, and their faith in God, they were warriors, they were triumphant, they were not pacifists, they were not lukewarm believers. See, when you have faith, you have courage. When you have courage, you don't cower. When faced with adversity, you rise to the occasion. And so, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1, and I'm going to bring them, thank you for this light, because it's... Oh, here, I'll get you that I want to. Okay, well... Uh, readers, men, the men in the car... Do you want some readers? Would you like to try them? Yes, that would be great. It just means that I'm getting older okay. and I don't see. Are these too strong? Try this. Are these too strong? If they're not 125, that's fine. Oh, three? No, that would blow my eyes out. Okay, let's read. In verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. This testimony has not changed from generation to generation. When we proclaim that we have faith in God, that we who are followers of Yeshua believe and trust in the living God. He is the same God the elders believe. He is the same God that Abraham worshipped and served. He is the same God that, that Isaac and Jacob believed in. He is the God of Joshua. He is the God of David. He is the God of Moshe. He is the God of Israel. And he is the God who promised Israel that he would never leave them. He would never forsake them. So I don't know where this doctrine of replacement theology comes from, except the pit of hell. And those who preach and advocate for a doctrine that goes contrary to the truth of the gospel, to the truth of the Bible, well then you need to check your yourself. Thank you very much. Perfect. Wow. By it, speaking of faith, the elders obtained a good testimony. See, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. This is the same God that is joined with Israel, has been for thousands of years, and it's the same God who will continue to stand with Israel and fulfill his covenant that he swore to the fathers, to the very elders who had obtained a good testimony. You see, that faith is the faith that we preach. That's the faith that we live and walk by day by day. 
So our faith is in the God of Israel, and those who stand with Israel stand with the God of Israel. So we need to be on the right side of the debate. Amen? Amen? Yeah. And not be ashamed, and not be afraid, and not be terrified by their threats. So we understand that God's word shaped the entire universe so that the things which are seen were not made of things that are visible. That's what we, that's what we profess, that our faith, Jesus said, can move mountains. That if you have faith, nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing. Don't be afraid. Believe. Have faith in God. Yeshua never taught us to stop believing and trusting in the God of Israel. Matter of fact, Jesus is the Messiah of Israel. Amen. And he came for the salvation of his people Israel. Amen. And he will come again and he will fulfill and bring it to a conclusion. And all we can do is pray for all those fools out there that are marching mm -hmm. and chanting for the wrong side. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 4 says, By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. More excellent. What's the difference between a sacrifice that God will honor and have respect for and a sacrifice like Cain. What's the difference? It's accepted, one's not. One sacrifice is accepted, the other is not. It has everything to do with your faith. Scripture teaches us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Imagine a sacrifice that is not pleasing to God. No. The scripture goes on to say this in verse 5. <clears throat> By faith, Enoch was taken away in the mid-trib rapture. <laughs> what version are you reading? <laughs> so there is a rapture. <laughs> so that he did not see death. Imagine that. Taken away supernaturally taken up. Scripture says his name is Enoch. And what is the relationship that Enoch has with the Jewish people? What relationship does he have with Israel's history that he would be mentioned in this hall of faith? He was taken away. He did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony yeah. that he pleased God. You see, faith is what pleases God. And when you believe and trust in the God of Israel, you will be named among these great heroes of faith. Yeah. Understand? Yeah. Those who believe in the God of Israel and have faith in the God of Israel will be standing with Israel today. Why? Because of their faith. Yeah. That this God who loved Israel thousands of years ago and made a covenant, an everlasting covenant, that he will fulfill in the coming days. Guess what? What preacher would want to stand contrary to God and to the Israel of God? That just doesn't make sense. Where's that coming from? It cannot be coming from God, and it certainly cannot be pleasing to God. So imagine a whole church that doesn't please God. Come on now. It reminds me of Laodicea's rebuke and warning. You see? You have a, a name that you're alive, but you're dead. That you're rich, but you're poor. You see, our budgets don't define us. Elaborate churches don't define us. If you want an elaborate church, 
go to the Vatican, remember? Right. Rochelle and Francis and I were, were at the Vatican. Matter of fact, you were at the Vatican. And because Rochelle was too loud, they told her to shut up. No. Silence! No. Remember? Silence! No. <laughs> Silence! Shh. Well, you see, that's what lukewarm Christians are. They stay silent. They will not speak out. They will not stand against the status quo. Messianic believers are not like that. You see, Messianic believers really do believe in the God of Israel. And they know that God is not done with Israel. So when we see Israel under attack today and an entire world against her, ah, that's the time for us to rise up and to cry out. Because this faith that pleases God, well, God's going to come through for Israel, and we know that, so it's only a matter of time to see the deliverance that God will do for his people and the fulfillment of what he has ordained for Israel's future. And so, the scripture says, but without faith it is impossible to please God, right? For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. Now, we're given an example what happens when we are divinely warned. Do we not read in the Holy Bible that there is a dragon in rage with the woman who gave birth to the Messiah? Do we not read that that dragon, that serpent of old, is Satan and the devil himself? Do we not read that he will incite the nations to war against Israel? Are we not seeing evidence of that today? Have we not seen evidence throughout history that there is a world that hates Israel and there is an Israel that God loves and protects and every, every chant for Israel's annihilation to cease to exist in the genocide of the Jewish people has not prospered. Right? Praise be to God. Praise be to God. And those who are chanting death to Israel today, themselves will be dead. Yes. When God will strike them dead. Yes. Unless they what? Repent. Repent. And believe and line up behind God's holy commandment. What is his commandment but that we love him and we serve him only? What is his commandment that we love one another? You see, love is the fulfillment of the law. And I just say to those who profess to be believers in Jesus, who hate Jews and hate Israel, how do you go to sleep at night mm -hmm. knowing that your heart is filled with bitter hatred against the people that the rest of the world hates? How can you say that you love God and hate the Jewish people? There's no room for anti-Semitism in the church and I can tell you it is there. It is there. And it has its root in replacement theology because what people would not want to see the Jewish people saved, yeah. but the people that hate Israel and the Jew. Or they're just plain ignorant. Well, they're just ignorant. I would hope it's ignorance. That's what I hope too. I hope it's ignorance because God help you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I read about those who rose up against Israel and the Jewish people, how they were destroyed by the God of Israel. Yeah. But you just read that they should be diligently seek the Lord. Diligently so, seek the Lord. There's no excuse to be ignorant. Because, because if you were diligently seeking the Lord, God would open your eyes to the truth of what's going on but in our day. Be because He's a, telling us. By a, by a responsible, godly man in the pulpit. Noah was a preacher of righteousness, and for 120 years, they're laughing and scoffing him, right? But then the divine judgment came. Mm -hmm. When you see these things beginning to happen, Yeshua said, Look up! Your redemption draws near. Might I remind you that he was speaking to the Jewish people when he said that. When he was at Jerusalem, he warned them 
to be watching, to be praying, to be waiting. Because these difficult days of Jacob are coming. Now I'm not going to say that we're in Jacob's trouble. But right now, Jacob has a lot of trouble. <clears throat> right? Yeah. And so, he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, you haven't seen anything yet. I'm looking forward when all the nations that rise up against Israel will be destroyed. And their armies will be no more. You remember what happened to Pharaoh and his armies? They got swallowed up. The pride of Egypt was brought low. Iran? Whew, look up. Look out. You see, there is an abomination of desolation right there in that temple mount. But I will not go into that this morning. Whoa, when I saw those missiles from Iran coming, I was getting excited. Rabbi was hoping that they would hit. I was hoping that we would hit. I would have loved to watch it blow up. But God will rain fire down from heaven. And he will destroy it. Because that's God's holy mountain. And I know that false prophet didn't ascend from there. So you see, we don't by the lies that are being perpetuated throughout the world. It is further evidence that we are living in the last days and that the lie and the deception is what people are going to believe rather than to embrace the truth. So you see, Noah was divinely warned. Things that were not yet seen, he was moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his house by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. What does faith do? It stirs up action. You see? Christians cannot be pacifists. Well, all these things that are going on in the world. We need to be activists. Yes, standing with Israel. Shouting the cries. Yes. From the river to the sea, Israel will be free. free. Oh, amen. That's our chant. We can chant too, right? Amen. Now, by faith, Abraham obeyed. So faith moves us to action. So we cannot be pacifists. We cannot be lukewarm when we see all of these things happen. Abraham obeyed God. Faith also involves what? Obedience. Obedience, work. Work. Work while it is day because the night is coming when no one can work. It is high time for the church to rise up out of its slumber. Because Laodicea is the sleeping church. <sighs> That's not a message for another time. But here the thing. You see, he obeyed when he was called to what? Go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. You know what place that was? It is that land that is Israel. Mm -hmm. And you see, from that river all the way to that sea, it's more land than what they're fighting for right now. Mm -hmm. And you see, that inheritance was promised to Abraham and to his descendants after for an everlasting what? Possession. So whatever the UN thinks they're going to accomplish. Wow. You know? I remember when I was getting ready to go overseas and catch up with my ship that was on its way back to the Middle East. Guess what? I had a whole day in New York City. I went to two big monumental buildings. The first one was the World Trade Center. And I remember looking up at those Twin Towers and then so proud to be an American. And I felt invincible 
Well, of course I was 18. We're all invincible at the age of 18. And I'm in uniform, right? And I'm proud because I'm, I'm a part of the world's greatest military. I'll even go even further, the world's greatest Navy with the U.S. Sixth Fleet. And I'm so proud. I says, we're invincible. And then what happened on 9-11 of 2001? How invincible were we? And do you know who was behind those, that attack? Mm -hmm. The very people in our colleges and universities right now mm -hmm. are raising up the enemy's flag yeah. on this great nation, yeah. and our leaders are pacifists. <laughs> are they? What are we talking about here, Luke 1? Because nobody wants to be politically incorrect. Well, I can expect that from college professors and university presidents. But Christian pastors? Mm -hmm. Wow. But then again, there are cowardly who don't want to shake up the status quo. Mm -hmm. They want to be politically correct. But that's not Emmanuel Israel. Mm -hmm. And so, an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going, and by faith he dwelled in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, dwelling in tents, not with Ishmael and the Ayatollah. What is it about Isaac and Jacob that has everything to do with Israel today? They are the fathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The promise was to Jacob and to his descendants after him for an everlasting what? To be God to Israel and the land to Israel. What doesn't, what don't they get? Now I'm not speaking about the ungodly leaders that make up most of the nation's leadership. I'm talking about those so-called pastoral leaders in churches that somehow don't get it. That what God promised to Israel is forever. There is an everlasting covenant and it has not been replaced by another that supersedes or replaces the covenant that God swore to Israel forever. Once again, Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. What God swore to Abraham, he swore to Isaac, he swore to Jacob, and he affirmed it to Israel as an everlasting covenant. Is that the Israel that we are talking about today? Yes. Now, it's the same promise, the same God. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. What city are we talking about, Rochelle? The heavenly Jerusalem. And what is the future of the heavenly Jerusalem? It will come down and rest on that holy mountain, right? It will rest in that holy city that we call Jerusalem today. Isn't it any wonder that we have a devil that wants to just stir up the masses of people worldwide to war against Israel and its possession of its rightful city, Jerusalem. What are we seeing? But we're seeing biblical history unfold. Biblical prophecy is unfolding right before our eyes. How can we not be excited? How can we not rise up and, 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 and sound the shofar and stand our watch and to pray and to cry out to our God and then what will God have us to do but to rise up and take action? Don't we see that in these heroes of faith? <coughs> faith does not make us and turn us into pacifists. It, it stirs up within us to become activists, to lead the marches into the streets. Once again, we're seeing some very peculiar times. 
Now, by faith, Sarah herself also received strength. You see, faith makes you strong, not weak. Faith makes you courageous that you rise up and you fight the good fight and you wage the good warfare. That's what faith does. Faith does not turn us into Laodicean pacifist. Again, she received strength. She bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful. Now notice the faith of Sarah. God is faithful. You know what his faithfulness is? It's our assurance that what he swore and what he promised, he will fulfill it. Where does replacement theology fit in? Because if God changed his mind regarding Israel and its future, then we're in trouble. Amen. That is not a faithful God who changes his mind. No. Sarah understood that, and it strengthened her. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. It sounds to me that these innumerable, immeasurable descendants tells me that there will never be a genocide that can change this. So how can these people think that they can, well, we want the state of Israel to be removed. And then we want the Jewish people to cease to exist. When did you become greater than God himself? Now, the scripture says these all died in faith. Not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. It sounds like many Christians today. We are pilgrims. We are what? We're just passing through. We know that we have a heavenly country. We know that the holy city of Jerusalem, that is our destination. But until that day comes, what do we do with the time that we have here on earth when there's so much work to be done? Why? Because what's going to hasten the coming of Moshiach? Hmm. The repentance of Israel, which has been foretold by the holy prophets. There's coming a day when God will remove the veil of blindness from them. And guess what? Who are going to be the preachers? Who are going to be the heralds of good news to the Jewish people? Should it not be God's holy church? Right? Yes. So next time we, we have a debate about Jewish evangelism and your replacement theology and your whole doctrine that somehow in some way it's not the church's job <coughs> for Israel to be what? Saved. Right now, we're volunteers in God's army. But there's coming a time that these uh, pacifists will be inducted into God's army during those tribulation days. I doubt very much they're going to go to heaven. Why would God reward sloth? Matter of fact, Jesus says, I come as a thief in the night, and I come and I don't find you what? Watching? I don't find you active. I find you sleeping because you're a pacifist and you're bored. I'll cut you your two. I'll cut you in two and appoint you your portion with the hypocrites, with the unbelievers. You know what that portion is? You're going into that tribulation period. There's a day of reckoning. God didn't call us to be pacifists. He called us to be what? Workers, Workers missionaries, <laughs> activists. Listen, they all died in faith, not 
having received the promises, having seen them afar, been assured of them, embraced them, confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. Are the Jews still seeking a homeland today? And will they have that <coughs> fulfilled? There's only one homeland for the Jewish people that I know about. It's called that land of Israel. And the world wants to take that away. And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. You see, when we come to faith in Yeshua, we become followers of the Messiah of Israel. The hope of Israel is for the coming of the Moshiach and to usher in that age of the Messiah. That's when we'll see and have and enjoy peace on earth. But until then, there will be wars, there will be rumors of wars, and guess what? We are to be actively engaged in that warfare that will tear those strongholds down. Now yesterday, there was a march on City Hall. Was it yesterday or Thursday? Every day of prayer. Day of prayer. Thursday. Every year they get together for prayer. But how many of us know the day of prayer is every day? Mm -hmm. And every day we are to be praying and, 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 and pleading with God because you see, we are the watchmen on Zion's walls. Again, therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. These scriptures are not talking about who's being referred to here. Who are they? Is it the Jewish people? Is it Israel? Or is it the church apart from Israel? The last time I read my Bible, it says that we've been what? Grafted in to the commonwealth of Israel. That we've been what? Joint heirs with the Lord himself, who happens to be the king of the Jews. And why would the king of the Jews turn on the Jews? He's not that kind of king. Once again, by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises, offered up his only begotten son. It sounds to me like that foreshadows the offering of the Messiah himself. So Abraham was right when he prophesied that God will provide the ram. He will provide the sacrifice. Again, you see, and what was his confidence? Because you see, you would think that the promise was vested and limited to Isaac in his nope. Never was. Right, his natural state. Never was. You see, what did Abraham believe? You see, he believed and he concluded that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. Can God raise up Israel? even from the dead, from the ashes yes. Woo! Yeah. to the birth of a nation yes. in one day. That's a miraculous yeah. mm -hmm. resurrection or rebirth. Mm -hmm. And, then can, the dry bones live again? and can the dry bones live again? Yeah. You must be tuned into the Holy Spirit. Amen. See, there's no written sermon here. <clears throat> just the Word of God. Amen. And just as the Spirit speaks, so we preach and teach Amen. by the Holy Spirit and I guarantee you the Holy Spirit is not anti-Israel the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit is not mm -hmm. replacement theology it didn't come from the Holy Spirit so what right. spirit brought that demonic mm -hmm. doctrine into the churches yeah. now by faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau Concerning things to come. What was. What was Isaac doing? What is it when we bless? There's a lot of people cursing Israel. And shouting for her annihilation. 
What happens to those who curse Israel? They die. What happens to those who bless Israel? They are blessed. You see, God says, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. Be careful. Because if there's somebody that's anti-Israel, anti-Semitic, I wouldn't stand next to them. Matter of fact, I wouldn't even invite them into your home. Why? Because you don't know when the, when the, when the Lord's going to strike them. <coughs> but then again, what is it that Jacob <coughs> received? Right? By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning on the top of his staff. And by faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instruction concerning his bones. What is it that Joseph believed? That the people were going to return to the land of Israel. What do we believe today? That Israel's in possession of the land that had been promised to her. And guess what? It is an everlasting possession. And Jerusalem will always be the eternal city of God, not Rome. God forbid that you embrace that doctrine. Okay, Pastor Gil. Tone it down. Tone it down. But here. See, Joseph believed. And he gave instructions concerning his bones. 2018, Pastor Gill is going to make Aliyah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now I'm going to put it in my will. <laughs> Take my bones to the land. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and Rochelle will do it for you. <laughs> because Rochelle will be there during the tribulation period. But just for 1290 <laughs> days. And I've been telling you, don't worry, God. You're, you're going to go up. But, you want me to bury your bones again, die before. <laughs> we are the army of the 1290th. <laughs> no. So, think about it. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, right? Verse 23 tells about Moshe. That by faith Moshe, when he was born, was hid in three months by his parents. Why? Because like my mom, when she saw me at birth, said, this is a beautiful child. Amen. She agreed. God bless you, mama. He's such a beautiful child. He must be a chosen one. And they were not afraid of the king's command. By faith, Moshe, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. I refuse to be called a son of the apostate church I read about in the book of Revelation. Because that church hates Israel and stands contrary to everything yeah. God promised her. Again, you see, he refused. You see, choosing rather, and notice that it was his choice. We have free will. It's a choice. Rather than suffer affliction with the people of God, do you know what people he's referring to here? Israel. The children of Israel. See, pacifist Christians don't want to suffer affliction with the children of Israel. That's why they refuse to speak out and say anything about Israel because they don't want to be offended and they don't want people to, to be offended and they don't want people to persecute them. See, because it's not a popular stand. Again, he chose to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. Every believing follower of Yeshua must be looking to the reward. There is great reward for those warriors who stand with Israel in these last days. Why? Because we've got the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, note this. The mention of Christ, Moshiach. The reproach of Moshiach, greater riches than the treasures in Amen. Egypt. The spirit of Moshiach isn't something that was invented by the church. It predates the church. See, God's unceasing love and devotion to Israel has been from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. Understand 
that when you come to know the truth, and even though you may be politically correct in Pharaoh's palaces, but guess what? You choose to take a stand with the people that the whole world wants to destroy in an island and refuse that they have a home, which is Israel. Again, what does the scripture say? He looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, not fearing the wrath of the United Nations, not fearing the wrath of those haters of Israel, those who are calling for the annihilation of the Jewish people. No, nope. he didn't fear. You see, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. And you see, the world can't see God. But we see the hand of God moving through all of these, these geopolitical crises that are going on right now. And when I hear the United Nations anathemizing Israel, I see the hand of God setting them up for the slaughter. Yeah. When I see the hundreds and thousands and thousands throughout the whole world chanting death to Israel from the river to the sea. Listen, what I see are fools marching to the slaughter. These are lost souls. You see, we have to pray that the Lord will yank them out of the fires of hells where they're, where they're going to. But note this. By faith, he kept the Passover. <laughs> it sounds like something we just did, right? Mm -hmm. And the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dried land, where as the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. Mm -hmm. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab. Isn't that amazing? Uh -huh. Did not perish with those who did not believe because she chose to stand with Israel and the Jewish people and not with the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. And she's mentioned in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Ah! What did she do? She received the spies with peace. She aided and abetted Israel. Israel. If you do that today, <laughs> the world stands <clears throat> ready to blow you out of the water. And see, that's what makes a lot of cowardly preachers in churches today. They don't want to be at the end of that assault. That's what makes for lukewarmness. Yes. We want to be politically correct. We don't want to take an unpopular stand because we're just well, taken away by the numbers. I think it's political. Verse 32, and what more shall I say? <clears throat> For the time will fail me to tell of Pastor Gil. Oh. <laughs> and his stand against Barack Obama. <laughs> Samson. Japheth. Of David. Samuel. The prophets who through faith subdued kingdom. It sounds to me that they were not lukewarm. They were not pacifists, but they were activists and they engaged the enemy and brought them down. That's what gets me excited about faith. Yes. Because everything I read here, these were men and women of war. They were warriors Amen. in the cause for Israel and the Jewish people. And so it is. Subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword out of weakness, were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the Ayatollah. What can I say? Women received their dead back to them again. What are we reading about faith? That it's not a pacifist faith. It's not a lukewarm faith. And if that is where the church is, the church needs to obey. And heed the warning in the book of Revelation. You see, and take the counsel of the Lord. Amen. So we got to pray for our brothers and sisters in churches right now that refuse to take a stand. And with that, I turn it over.
Amen. To you. And uh, thankfully, when we're called to be warriors, mm -hmm. and we are called to be warriors, God doesn't leave us alone. He says, I will do it in you. I will do it. <coughs> and he enables. So the weak are made strong. The fearful find a boldness, yes. and it comes in the power of the Ruch HaKodesh, yes. our Holy That's Spirit. Right. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So if he calls you, take that stand. If he asks you to speak, don't be afraid. What will I say? Because in that hour, give it to you. the Lord will give you what you are to say. We have a chance to show. We have a chance to share. The darker the night, the brighter the light. Mm -hmm. And because of our circumstances, it is a, t a chance, an opportunity to really shine. Amen. And I think the best thing we can do is to close in prayer, not just praying for Israel's protection, but praying for the salvation, not only of Israel, but of her enemies. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. that's the best that could happen, mm -hmm. is that her enemies get saved. Mm. So let's close with a word of prayer. Give honor to our God, who reigns, whose plan is never thwarted, who is not up there pacing before his throne. There's not a plan B. There's nothing but the faithfulness of our God. <coughs> Elohe, this, oh, hey. <coughs> excuse me. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's my. I'm. It's me at the moment. <coughs> oh, hey, Israel, God of Israel, El Shaddai, God Almighty, we praise you and we thank you for who you are. We thank you for being faithful and true. We thank you that your word is lasting. We thank you that it is true from not just generation to generation, but from eternity to eternity, from the past to the future. Lord God, we thank you that you have called <coughs> us that we are in your army. Thank you for giving us a strong leader who is not afraid to take a stand. <clears throat> Lord, take Emmanuel Israel. Light us on fire. Send us out. And may we be lights in the darkness. May we be the voice of truth. May we speak louder and longer than the lie, that it might be swallowed up in the victory of the true word of our living God. Lord, anoint us, empower us, May we not draw back in fearfulness. May we not even take a moment to consider. But may we be quick, quick to follow, quick to obey, quick to do whatever it is you would have us to do. Lord, as you send us forth in the power of your spirit, may it be that power that opens the eyes and stops the ears, that even turns the enemy to know who their God, who the, the God of Israel is. Lord. We know that they are following a false. They're following one who has deceived them. They're following one who they want to, in their pride, lift themselves up with. Lord, may they see. It is you. We need to all bow before you. Whether we're Jewish or whether we're Gentile, we need to bow at your feet. We know that your word is true, that through Israel, the rest of the world will be blessed. That you did not leave out anyone. That you love that that enemy and you tell us to love our enemies and we can only do that in the power of the spirit we cannot do that in our human selves mm -hmm. oh lord even now we humble ourselves and pray we pray for those who are coming against israel we pray for the false church that is coming against israel lord we pray that they'll come to understand your word that they'll hear that they will not follow because they're sheep following a false shepherd who's leading them to the slaughter. Oh, Lord, we pray. Let the testimony shine brighter. Let the words be stronger. Let the Spirit of God permeate. Let the power of the Ruch HaKodesh be poured out. Lord, you say the harvest is ripe. The laborers are few. We are your laborers. We choose, Lord, to follow you in obedience. And we thank you that there will be a bringing in of the sheaves. Lord, we pray, let one more be saved. Mm -hmm. Let one more be snatched out of the jaws of defeat, of death, of mm -hmm. the one who hates you so. Oh, Lord, we cannot wait till we see him under your feet in that lake of fire forever, forever. 
Lord, remind him of his future. And may our people stand strong and true. May we take that stand and may we be the, the ones giving out the word of God. For we are not ashamed of the power of, of God. For we are not ashamed of the salvation. It is the power of God for all who believe. Yes. To the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Lord, light it in us. May it come pouring out of us. May it ooze out of our very fiber of our beings, out of every cell. May not one be silent. May we take that stand. May we be strong. May we be your warriors. And may we warrior in the power of your spirit. Thank you, Lord. It is you who does it. It is you who is in us. It is you who will be glorified. It is you who all will one day bow the knee and say, you are the God of Israel. Mm. You are the one true and living God. And we give you praise and glory from now until forever and ever and ever. We praise your holy name and we thank you. Victory in Yeshua, Jesus. Let the world know let the world know. Oh, we praise you yes. and we thank you. You are the lion of the tribe of Judah. Mm -hmm. The lamb is so slain, now risen in that resurrected power pouring out. And Lord, we know these are last moments. So use us, use us. May we even reach the enemy of Israel with mm -hmm. the words of truth. And especially, Lord, may we reach our dear brethren. May this one coming tomorrow night be so overwhelmed by the Spirit of God that when she goes home to Israel, she'll go home with Messiah in her heart yes. and she'll share the truth there too. Oh Lord, we say amen because that means that we are saying so be it, yes, but we are saying it is God, it is faithful, and it is true. Yeah. Oh Lord, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Are we feeling empowered? Are we feeling ready? Yeah. If you've got the Lord in your heart, you're a missionary. Your mission field is right outside the door. Mm -hmm. Might be even in your door. But everyone without the Lord, that's your mission field. Mm -hmm. Go, speak, tell. Don't be silent. Don't be afraid. The Lord is with you. Amen. And with the Lord on your side, mm -hmm. Amen. Victory, victory is yours. Yeah. Victory is yours. God has even chosen to put a blessing upon you. And we close in that with our ironic benediction, the only recorded prayer of Jehovah in our scriptures. And it, what a blessing that he gives to us. Be absorbed in it. Let it fall on you. Let it just refresh you, renew you, rejuvenate you, send you out. Feeling so loved and so strong in the name of Yeshua, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen.